Hello folks and welcome to this week's review. What have we got for you this time? A pair of floor standing speakers, high end, priced at £9,895. These are the PMC 2526 speakers. Now I first reviewed PMC as a company in terms of its speakers on this channel way back in 2020 in November. I think it was, which is going back a bit. And that was in the shape of the stand mounted 2521i speakers. And I like them so much, I've always wondered how far this particular series could stretch in sonic terms and via a floor standing configuration. So here we are then. And here we go, because I'm going to talk techie. And of course, that means, as you very well know, that we're going to have to take a closer look. Welcome to the Closer Look section for the PMC 2526 floor standing speakers. And what you can see in front of you is a pair of eight ohm designs that use two advanced transmission line slots, which connect the base driver to a rather long and winding damped tunnel. This tunnel removes distortion and damps out the bit of look high frequencies. The front mounted ports that you can see here, then apparently, according to the company, push out base in phase, which is the essential term here, with the driver itself. So they work together as a team. The upshot is an extension of the base itself. This means, though, that you can't just use any old standard base driver you might find down the back of the sofa. You've got to find something that will work in tandem with the ATLs. So in this case, PMC use a base unit spanning six and a half inches or 170 millimeters. It's a long throw unit with a G weave cone. G weave, you ask? Well, that's a sort of woven glass fiber composite. Moving further up, there's a 50 millimeter domed mid-range and moving up even further, a 27 millimeter Sonolex fabric soft dome tweeter. And Sonolex, in case you're not aware, it's a sort of lightweight fabric, very even consistency across the whole surface, and it's not really affected by climatic change, so it's very stable. The tweeter is cooled and damped by a liquid called ferrofluid. Switch around to the back now, and there ain't a lot there. In fact, all you can see is a pair of rather solid, sturdy binding posts offering a sensitivity of 86 decibels. And well, I was expecting something a touch higher, but hey, no matter. These speakers will need an amplifier pushing out around 30 watts or more to drive them. And they stand 1,040 millimeters by 192 by 439 millimeters. They weigh, and they are weighty, 25 kilograms it's just over 55 pounds each and arrive with removable grills. And I tested these speakers with the grills off. In terms of color, you're looking at a walnut, diamond, a black or oak. So that's basically the techie stuff sorted. How do these speakers sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we will find out. To begin these tests, I started with CD. It's a World Music Affair release, and I have to apologize for my incredible ignorance about just about everything to do with this CD. The name of the artist, I think, is Aziza Brahim. Apologies if I've got that wrong. The label is Glitter Beat, but everything else I really don't know how to pronounce. The name of the album, I'll put down below. The track I used, well, I'll give that a go. That's El Canto de la Arena, I think. Again, I'll put it down below in case I've got that wrong, probably have. 
and it's a rather romantic piece. Features a melancholy female vocal, a slow paced yet chocolatey romantic guitar, bass guitar, and there's some pipes and small sets of bells and a host of organic percussion. Of what type? I know not, I'm afraid. Now, first impression from this CD from the PMCs. Well, because of PMC's reputation for their use of the transmission line, you'd think I would immediately talk about bass, wouldn't you? Well, no, no I won't. I will do soon, but not just yet. Now, these speakers are very easy to drive. So much for my sensitivity comments a bit earlier on. Hey, and I had to lower the gain by several clicks from my normal Quad 57 electrostatics speaker volume, for example. Well, hey, I was talking about first impressions, wasn't I? Well, what first hit me about the PMCs was the envelopment, which is a slightly odd statement to make, possibly. I'm not kidding you. These speakers, they kind of surround you. They draw you in with one big sonic cuddle. Sound kind of curves around your shoulders left and right. So you feel as though you're in the sound stage. It's an impressive effect, I have to say. Sure, the main event obviously is happening in front of you, but the outer edges of the sound stage, they kind of curve in. It's a bit like it's a bit like watching one of those new-ish. 4K televisions which curve at the edges, or you may have seen a computer monitor which does the same, you know, they sort of curve. It's a bit like that. The idea, I suppose, to draw you in to the action. Well, that's what the PMCs do. And because the soundstage edges sort of reach out to you, there's a, a whole heap of space and air which is created because of that, which means that there's a single symbol tap at the beginning of this track and it hangs in the air for an absolute age. And that was pretty wondrous. Now, my Quad 57s, as an example, can do that trick, but I didn't expect that from a pair of boxed cabinets. Similarly, there's a woodwind instrument sequence mid-track of a type my ignorance cannot fathom, I'm afraid, but the human breath powering it is easy to discern which only adds to the texture of the track itself. And I promised to talk about the bass, didn't I? Well, here we go then. On this track, bass pulses in restrained power. It's beautifully contained, yet full of potential. You know the power is there in buckets if needed. Bass doesn't, it doesn't prance about here. It doesn't shout at you and wave its arms about. Bass isn't a headline feature, and that's how I wanted bass to be. You can hear the latent power. The PMCs ooze confidence in lower frequencies. As a complete contrast, I turn to a glockenspiel section of the Mike Oldfield Incantations LP on vinyl, which initially majored on the upper mids and especially treble because of the glockenspiel and then later in the track it drops down to a lead electric guitar and percussion the pmc's provided impressive clarity here with both focus around the upper mids but also precision around the treble with some later on in the track real grunt and emotion across the lead guitar and the percussion I did want to make a note on the stands for these speakers. They're fine, incidentally, and here they are. Basically, they consist of two bars, and here's one of them. And basically, the bars fit, obviously, underneath the speakers, and they are coupled together with these two washers, which act as sort of damping material in compression. And then the whole speaker is supported by these spikes. And if you have a wooden floor, there's little feet 
underneath the spikes to prevent your floor being damaged. Thing is though, sonically, well, they do restrict the final performance. Now this is not a PMC problem per se, it's more of a broad floor standing concern which covers many, many speaker brands. But hey, this is a PMC review, so I'm talking about it here. But look, the PMC 2526 speakers are high-end designs with a top quality sound output. I think I've made that pretty clear already. But the attached PMC stands are, well, they are a sonic bottleneck. Now look, they're not bad, so any new PMC users out there shouldn't panic and many users out there they probably won't care anyway and they'll be very happy with the stands as they are and the speakers as they are but look if you're the kind of guy who does care about getting every last ounce from your hi-fi hardware well to really let these speakers fly go for an upgrade when funds allow you can really hear the problem on this mic o-field track because the edges of the treble frequency they lose a bit of control and focus right at the extremes. Hence, I highly recommend replacing the PMC stands with very high quality, very third party supports. And I would recommend one of two. Either go for the Townsend podiums, which I've already reviewed on this channel, link above, or go for the Stack Audio Orvers. I haven't done a review of those on this channel. In fact, I am in the middle of reviewing them right now. So they will be on my website sooner rather than later. And what I'll do, I'll mention the Stack Audio Overs in a forthcoming Friday video. But check out my website, keep a look out for that, and there will be a full review on there. Anyway, whether you use the Townsend Podiums or the Stack Audio Overs, in place, the precision, the focus, and the detail shot through the roof and was just devastating. And because I could hear the top edges of the treble frequency for the first time, there was more reverb from these notes, more space, and greater secondary detail from all of that. Later in the track, that noticeable PMC percussive bass was tightened even more, producing further impact and force. So to repeat, look, if you're happy with the stands as is, as arrive in the box with these PMC speakers, fine. They offer great performance. The speakers sound wonderful as they are. But if you want to push it, if you want to get every last ounce of information from these speakers, and there's extra potential there, let me tell you, then go for one of those third-party systems I've just mentioned. So that's basically the review. And how can I conclude this review? Well, I'll give it a go with some final thoughts, and then we'll do some pros and cons. Then I'll give you a rating. So then, the PMC 2526 speakers in short, impressive, very impressive. But I'll tell you this, if you're going to spend this much money on a pair of high-end speakers, and obviously they come at a high-end price, but in my opinion, they're worth it, then you also should budget for a top quality, and I mean top quality set of stands isolation feet for them. They allow the PMCs to soar across a sonic sky. In general terms though, well, the PMC 2526s offer detail combined with power. They offer a sense of the epic mixed with drama, but still manage to add restraint and self-control. They sound big and expensive, Yes, they can do fragile, they can do delicate, and they can also do emotion. So, the PMC 2526s, they are can do speakers. So, let's talk about pros and cons, shall we? And let's begin with that soundstage. 
and as I say, it has a curved feel, a curved sound to it, which really draws you in to the music itself. I liked the bass, which wasn't obvious, it wasn't in your face in an AV kind of way. It was powerful and latent. The mid range, I thought it was pretty spacious, lots of air, uh, lots of room for detail to manoeuvre. The treble, I like the treble clarity on this. A number of speakers I've listened to do have issues with treble, it's right at the end of the frequency spectrum. Some of them have difficulty coping, but not the PMC. And also the actual physical size of the cabinet. They do not dominate your listening room, and I think many people will like that. And in the bad section, absolutely nothing at all, which means that I'll be giving the PMC 2526 eyes an award-winning rating, and 8 out of 10 a groovy award. Congratulations to PMC. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And before you go, come back, come back, come back. Just down there, if you could click on the like and subscribe buttons, I would be, well, rather tearful in my happiness. Just feel it coming on now. And if you carry on further down to the description, you'll see links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join, my website, which has all kinds of stuff you won't find over here, uh, including that stack audio over review I mentioned, and my Patreon page. And if you can support me on Patreon, and there's all kinds of exclusives over there as well, then that will help to keep this channel going because it directly funds it. But there's other stuff over there which is exclusive only to Patreon. And Patreon is a sort of hub, so all of my stuff, doesn't matter where it comes from, or where it's posted, will find its way onto the Patreon page. I will be back next Friday with Hi-Fi News, etc. And there'll be good stuff on there. There'll be Hi-Fi News, there'll be trivia and other goodies, no doubt. I'll be back then, hopefully, in your company, because I hope you can keep me company, otherwise I'll get extraordinarily lonely. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.